longest tenure as managing director from 98-99 and again from 10-11 Ashok Leland's turnover increased 5 times, net profit multiplied 30 fold and market cap 14 fold. He has served as chairman of Indus in Bank and as a member of the board of ICICI Limited and ICICI Bank. He was on the board of Infosys Limited from 2011 to 2017 and was his chairman for more than two years from June 2015. Recently, he serves on the board of Asian Paints Limited. He was the president of Confederation of Indian Industry during 2006 and 2007 and an active leader of CII for over 20 years. Internationally, he was an active participant at Doha Ministerial Round of WTO in 2001. He was also the co-chair of the World Economic Forum Middle East during 2007. He has been connected with 17 different organizations including those in the areas of education, health, culture such as Cancer Institute, SCA Foundation and the Music Academy. He has won many honors and recognitions national as well as international including the Lifetime Achievement Award conferred by the Institute of Chartered Accountants of India. Thank you. He will talk to us today on the laws of giving and giving up. He says, rotarians of various hues are bound together by the common interest of giving. And giving up is an important theme in corporate life. Over to Mr. Seshashai. Thank you. And uh, 
uh, the human nature in relation to the, uh, the need for giving up. And therefore, uh, I thought that that's something which also would be appropriate uh, for discussion today. And hence the subject that uh, laws of uh, uh, giving and giving up. Giving is uh, something which is central to the culture, central to the, the ethical framework of any society, of uh, any religion. Uh, when we talk about dharma, uh, although that, that's, that is a very complex kind of uh, a word, complex kind of a subject that defies translation in any other language adequately, uh, it's all encompassing, it's not merely a moral compass, it is not merely a an ethical compass, it is far more comprehensive than that. And yet, at the same time, this word dharma is used also to denote charity. We talk about dharma van. Uh, so, the simple act of charity is also called dharma, which only means that this dual usage of dharma uh, to denote a very comprehensive moral compass in the one, and to use it uh, to denote uh, the act of charity uh, could only mean that charity is the very central purpose of karma and therefore giving is uh, pretty core to the concept of uh, uh, dharma. And uh, truly this is something which is not very unique to the uh, to one religion or to one society, but you see that uh, in every religion. In fact, there is uh, uh, a very, very beautiful surah in uh, Quran uh, which says that prayer takes you halfway to God, fasting takes you to the very door of God, but it is giving that opens the door to the kingdom of God. So it is uh, practically central in every uh, religion. And yet, giving has many hues, they are very different uh, ways of giving. The Gita talks about uh, a very interesting uh, uh, analysis of giving. The three types, the three gunas which the Gita talks about are ascribed to the act of giving. One is the, the rajas, the rajasic way of uh, giving and the other, the second is the tamasic way of giving and the third is the sattvic way of giving. The Rajasic way of giving is the one where there is an equation between the giver and the receiver in terms of a quid pro quo, that you give something because you expect something in return. And I am not talking about the kind of uh, Rajasic uh, uh, giving such as the donation that you would make to a college for getting an admission for your son in the engineering college, although it's called donation, uh, but that's business as we know, right? that's called differently. And I am not even uh, talking about uh, the kind of uh, uh, donation that you might make to a school uh, annual day function because uh, you expect the school will remember the fact that you have made a generous donation and will give uh, the part of Cinderella to your granddaughter rather than the part of pumpkin. Next time around. So I am not talking about all that. I am talking about the kind of giving that seeks to have the association of the giver in the act of giving and the post act of giving. That it seeks the name, recognition of name. It seeks the fact that there is an acknowledgement of the giver. And that is something that happens all the time. We expect that there must be a recognition of the donor's uh, graciousness. I have nothing against, uh, I don't have any issues about uh, something like the Rotary Club saying that uh, we need, when we have, when we give to the institution, we need that to be acknowledged in terms of uh, the fact that the, this has come from uh, the Rotary Club. Because this is an amorphous club. This is not for individual advancement of the glory that this is recognized. This is to enthuse other people to do that. But you have all the time when givers want to give because they want to see the name. If you go to a temple and if you go to see the the, the, tu the tubuli just before the sanctum, you have Ramaswami or Kukusami saying that this is donated by Ramaswami. 
just to make sure that the goddess does not uh, miss by chance uh, to recognize the fact that the light is, uh, that the sanctum has been lit in the evening by the graciousness of Ramasamy or so. So there is this, this, this urge to see that we see something in return. That is the kind of rajasic way of uh, giving. And the Gita says, but that's business, that's not giving. So it's not even giving. So that's, that's, that's dismissed. <coughs> then there is a second way of giving, which is the, the tamasic way of giving. And the best form of tamasic way, it is indifference to the, the receiver. While the rajasic way is all about the giver. The giver is the central piece in the entire act of giving. The center stage is with the giver. I mean, this the photograph is about the giving. The guy who is receiving this, the backside is, the, is what is visible in the photograph. The tamasic way is indifferent completely. That is the best. But in the worst situation, it could even be offensive to the receiver. And we do it all the time. We do it unknowingly. The tamasic way of giving, which is being indifferent to the giver. The act of giving is expected to give joy and expected to, to fulfill the need. But if you say that I don't know about that need and I'm not, I really don't care about that, I have to give it because this act of giving is about me and I'm indifferent to the receiver, that's a tamasic way. And the best example that I can think of is all the wedding gifts that they give. The table lamps, the wall, the wall clocks and, uh, and the photo frames are a classic example of how we would want to give for the sake of giving so you can take a box. You know for a fact that this young couple who gets married is going to US and is hardly ever going to look at the wall clock that you are uh, presenting. But you know that this is going to be repackaged uh, with, a, with a new wrapper and will be given away to the next friend. And who will then again repackage it to be, to be given to another marriage. That is the same thing about the blouse pieces. I, uh, I, I really think that, that is, I don't think that anybody gives a blouse piece because you expect the giver to be overjoyed by receiving this. It is meant to be a currency to be passed on from one to the other. So that's about the way that you could be indifferent to the needs and you just tip the box because you want to give. That's the, that's the more benign way of tamasic giving. There's a more offensive way of tamasic giving and that is about the, the, being, the giver being at an upper position and making the receiver feel small. <coughs> All of us know that our drivers come to us for our months. And for some odd reason, the breed of drivers need or forever in need of our months. And when they come to you, then you are tempted to say, but why do you require this? Why don't you manage your budget better? Why are you spent thrift? And why do you have to buy a cake for your birthday, for your son? Now you begin to then assume that because you are giving, you have the authority to talk and preach to the receiver. That's the kind of thing Gita says that that is something you have no right to do. You, go, you don't need not give. But you have no right to offend, make the receiver feel small in the process of giving. And that's the, the offensive way of giving. And that's again dispersed. And then there's a third way. And this is the Sattvic way. The Sattvic way takes away the giver from the scene. It is the receiver who is in the center stage. It is to fulfill the need of the receiver. It to bring joy to the receiver. To give delight to the receiver that you are going through the act of giving. And that is the Sattvic way of giving. And that is what has been celebrated in our mythology. When you talk about Karna, we talk about the Shibi uh, uh, anecdote where the, he cleaves a part of his thigh to, uh, to be given to uh, save a bird. Or you talk about the folklore when Pari gives away his chariot for a, uh, for a creeper. What is being celebrated is that it is the need of the creeper, it is the need of the bird that is being fulfilled in the process of giving. You are an instrument in the process of giving to fulfill the need and to bring joy. And that is what our mythology celebrates. That's what the folklore is made of. 
that sattvic way of giving is truly what is the purpose of giving. Cut to chase and if you look at uh, institutional giving, such as yourselves, such as various corporates who now have to give by way of uh, CSR, one way of making sure that you are doing the right thing at the right time to the right person is to see what the need is, do a need analysis and then make sure that you are doing this for the sake of the person, for to fulfill that need. I don't know to what extent you have the rigor of examining the need and to make sure that what you are giving is the need of the recipient. And that's something which I would say any large institution which is in the process of giving needs to adopt. This is so far as the way of uh, uh, giving, that's the how of giving. There is also the question about what is to be given and how much is to be given. The what part is something that we quite often answer by saying that what we don't need to give. We are all good at giving what we don't need. Actually, I must withdraw that statement. I am not sure that we are even good at that. Because uh, uh, we don't so easily give away what we don't need. You must remember the the number of fountain pens that we all store, although we know for a fact that we will never use a fountain pen in our lifetime. The, the wall clocks that we store or the, the sarees that was bought 20 years ago and which you know is now out of fashion and therefore will never be worn, uh, but you still want to hold on to it. Uh, these are things which all of us do, right? We are all guilty of holding on to things uh, which you don't want. Sometimes we also go on actively buy things which you don't need. That is even worse than that. In fact, there's a very interesting story of Socrates. Socrates, as you know, the Greek philosopher, was one day uh, roaming around in the in the shop uh, shopping area of uh, Athens. And somebody spotted him in the trinket shop uh, where there were uh, vases and uh, jewelry and all that being sold. So he came and said, uh, asked Socrates, Socrates, uh, what's happening? You're a philosopher and why are you wandering around this trinket shop? He said, you know what? I'm beginning to see how many things I can do without in my life. So sometimes you do go and buy stuff which you don't need, you know you don't require. That is the part of the seeking to hold on. But nevertheless, where we declare that this is going to be completely beyond use, we are good at giving old clothes and things like that. But giving is not about what you don't want. Giving and what, what you don't value. Giving is about what is precious for you, what is valuable for you. That is what is giving. <coughs> you don't therefore have hesitation in parting with something which is precious for you. We are all familiar with this uh, convention that we have when you go to Benares, to Varanas, you must leave something. You must, you must renounce something. And people will go and renounce uh, Bhakta Varanga or the power of because it's easy to uh, renounce. In any case, you would not touch it even when you come back. But the whole idea, concept of that is to say that this is a signal of renunciation. That you give away what is most precious for you. That's the concept of giving to say. You don't hesitate to do that. And if you go back again to the folklore and mythology, the most precious things, whether it is a karna or a shivi, is the more precious things that have been given away. Because the recipient requires that, he needs that. And that is the concept and the value of giving. Then you come to this question of what and how much will you give? That's not an easy answer. You have Bill Gates and Melinda showing the way by establishing this foundation by saying that we'll give away 50 percent of the wealth and that's a clean 28 million dollars 28 billion dollars and then had a warren buffett who said that uh, i will also give 50 percent and i won't even put have my own foundation i won't even seek to have my name recognition and i'll give this 50 percent of my wealth to bill and melinda gates foundation that was another 28 billion dollars but there's no prescription about how much you give there is no percentage, there is no good practice in terms of what percentage is good or what percentage is bad. 
What is precious is important there, once again. Parmacharya of Kanchi made a very, very interesting statement. He said, it's far more important to give from a person, from a poor man, it's very important that he gives one rupee or two rupees to a cause. And for a busy person, and for a wealthy person, he must at least spend an hour or two on a good cause. Because that's what is precious. So in the context of the work that all, all of us are doing in a variety of forums, some of us would be giving by way of money, some of us would be giving by way of our time. Time is very important. Giving time for a good cause is as valuable a giving as writing a check. And if it is particularly important that if you are a busy person, which all of you are, it's more important to be able to spend time and empathize with the cause of the recipient. And that's far more valuable than writing a check. But of course, this percentage could vary from person to person. It could depend on the circumstances. There's a story about this United Way. I don't know if you've heard about the United Way. United Way is uh, one forum, which is a very, very large forum, uh, particularly in the US. It operates in other countries as well, where donors make uh, uh, donations through this forum to, to be given away to a number of very good causes uh, globally accredited. So, so one of these uh, United Way uh, representative values going through you know, in a town uh, and you know we have big data analytics and all of that so you could he, he knew precisely who was giving, who was not giving and slicing and uh, dicing and you could find out that who the people who were, had, were in the high income bracket who did not give and they located a lawyer who had a five million dollar uh, income and he had uh, hardly given away a thousand dollars so they all marched to his house and said, uh, Mr. Lawyer, uh, you have a $5 million and uh, you've just given $1,000. And the lawyer said, uh, but young man, do you know that uh, I have a mother who was uh, down with cancer and uh, her uh, hospital bills are several times more than her uh, annual income? Uh, so the man said, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't know that. And did you know that I have a brother who is a war veteran and is maimed and does not have uh, any means of living? This guy said, I'm truly sorry that this happened. And also a sister was widowed with three children and with no means of living. And so this man really went uh, under the table that he had uh, come to ask the person with this kind of issues. And then the man said, the lawyer said, but tell me, but since I have not given anything to any of these people, so why would I give it to you? <laughs> <laughs> The calling in terms of what you want to give is a very personal call. Uh, but I think it would be appropriate for an institution again to be able to say, here is what we want to be giving and want to be giving to make sure that the needs are well understood and well fulfilled. That brings me to the last part of what I have to say in terms of giving up from giving to the giving up. We all build our families, we build institutions. All of you have built institutions or have contributed to building institutions or have participated in building institutions. And we all have expectations from what we create, whether it's a family or whether it's an institution. We expect to see our children uh, the way that we are way that we want it to be. We give a lot to our family, to our children, and we expect that the children must give time to us, love to us, if not money. And we get disappointed if that doesn't happen. We all came from the animal world, but somewhere along in our part of the civilization, we lost one very important trait of in the animal world. Every animal, every mother in the animal world raises a child, a baby, to ensure that the baby is independent by itself. The moment a lion, a baby lion, learns to hunt for itself, it's left by itself. The moment a bird is able to fly 
and get its own food, it's left to fight for itself. The entire doctrine of nature is to create somebody or create a living being to be independent of you. That is the doctrine, not be dependent. The whole approach to the natural process of creation is to create something which is independent. Your role is to create that independence. And we all create our families, but somewhere along we, we lost sight of our duty to create independence in our children. And we quite often want to see in our sons or our daughters or daughters-in-law what we expect them to do. But they are a different generation, they are a different cultural background and they will do what they think is best. It's important that we recognize that. And that's true, equally true of institutions. When we create institutions, it's important that we create these institutions in order to make them independent, independent of us. And that is a learning that I've had for many, many years, that every step that you take should be intended to make that institution independent of yourself. The organization not be your copy, and this is very, very important. And that's a learning that has been reinforced over several years, and when I reflect on this, I believe that the, the Rotary Club has some very unique kind of characteristics which support the, the, the art of giving up. This is probably one institution where there is no anchoring to have a particular post that you don't say that, that there must be a power play to get to be a president or a district governor or whatever. Uh, at least this is what I understand. And very few uh, institutions can boast of that. That's a very strong, uh, strong moral ground that you have and it's important to reinforce that. It's important to make keep this an amorphous institutions in which people don't look for power, don't look for dependence of the institution upon yourself. And when you give, in the, in the process of giving and nurturing an institution, the whole process is intended, should be intended to make that institution independent of yourself. One of the things that I managed to drive fairly successfully in some of the institutions that I've had the privilege of leading is when we have a large CSR budget and we attempted to, and we have attempted with several offers for, uh, or several requests for donations and so on. One thing that we have tried to make sure in the organization that I've been involved in is to say that we will support this organization in order to make them independent. Maybe in a matter of two years, three years, four years, but they will be a dead stop. And that organization has to independently carry on. And this is a very important way of ensuring the continued survival and success of the institution and not have a dependence on the giver for long. And that is an important takeaway that I have from my experience and I wanted to share that with you. So let me close this by saying that the process of giving is not easy. The process of giving up is even more difficult. We don't trust anybody to be able to give up and that is a part of the renunciation. Uh, the doctrine of renunciation that is so very firmly etched in all our uh, religions, whichever religion that uh, we, uh, we talk about, in our society and uh, making sure that we understand that and imbibe that in the institutions that we are associated with is uh, very important. There is one very interesting uh, story about a guy who fell off the cliff by mistake he went very close to the edge and he just fell off, a uh, guy called Jack. And uh, while he was falling, he managed to uh, catch a branch of a tree and then uh, he looked down and there was this deep abyss which is a thousand meters down and, uh, and he was clinging for his life and then he started shouting, uh, shouting for help. And somebody, after some time, after some shouting, he heard a voice uh, the, from the top of the hill and the voice said, uh, Jack, I can see you. And then he said, can you hear me? And then the voice said, of course I can hear you. And then he said, who are you? He said, I'm God. So the voice said, I'm God. So he said, sure, yes. He said, because I'm God and that's why I can see everything. You and uh, uh, the abyss below. So he said, God, please help me out of this abyss. Uh, uh, I'll fall, do something to save me. 
He said, not to worry. It's the job of the gods to save people like you. So I'm there, don't worry. So he said, what do I do? He said, just let go. <laughs> the man thought, Jack thought for a few minutes and then said, is there somebody else there? <laughs> so thank you very much for this wonderful opportunity to meet all of you. Thank you very much. So in uh, Western society, we have the giving pledge and other things that people with uh, made a lot of money uh, to give some examples, there are many more like that. Do you see something like that ever happening in India? Are we evolved enough as a society to do such things or does it require some more time? Maturity and comfort with being wealthy before you start thinking of these things. Shankar, it's not only that uh, it there should be no question whether it will happen. It has it has happened here much earlier than the West. Uh, this art of giving is not about billionaires saying that we will give 50%. The art of giving is about sharing a meal when you got only one meal and sharing that meal. And I think that has been very firmly uh, imbibed by our uh, society. I'm not talking about the number of education institutions, hospitals built by business people and so on. I can tell you in the institutions that I've been involved in, uh, I've been amazed by the kind of people who are coming forward to give. They are people who are in need themselves. And I've seen this, and uh, I've seen this every time in the traffic junction. In the, when the cars stop, and you've got beggars coming, you could find the drivers of the car opening the windows to give, not the ones who are riding. So this is not something which is alien to us. I think this instinct to give, instinct to share, perhaps because all of us have been in need at some time or the other, we have, we have an empathy uh, with the needy a lot better than the West. So I don't think there is anything that we should uh, uh, learn from the West. We have enough here uh, and perhaps the rest of the world should learn from us. I'm Dr. Prithika Chari, I'm a neurologist. The brain is actually hardwired for altruism. And so this tendency to give and to do things for other people is something that we are born with. It's just that education and so many other external factors over the years modify that and push it to the back seat. So if we just go with nature and let ourselves be, we're not very giving as you. By spending 2,000 crores, we can provide uh, good water to all Chennai cities, Chennai city people. Why nobody is taking initiative? Because, because only th for 3 paise we can uh, produce uh, 1 litre water, 50 paise we can produce uh, 1 can water. Why nobody is taking any initiative in this? You will be declassing this and all. Only 2,000 crores is nothing because uh, government is, Tamil Nadu government is having 3 lakh crores, right? Revenue. Why they are not spending 2,000 crores, just 2,000 crores, they can provide water to Chennai city. All I can say is that uh, there are at least uh, a dozen organizations, uh, NGOs, who are working on water, including two that I know of, which are sponsored by multinational uh, corporations or uh, overseas uh, bodies, which uh, are considerably involved in uh, the water management uh, in the city. Of course, this is a daunting task. This is not an easy thing. It requires not merely resources, it requires the cooperation of uh, uh, social groups, uh, societies, they have to own this. Uh, for example, uh, this wonderful work done by Shiraduli in Coimbatore uh, is an instance of point, uh, uh, restoring uh, water bodies uh, that require the community to own and it requires a great deal of uh, time and effort. There's a lot of work, lot of work to be done. You know, one thing that
that I would say in my, with my uh, involvement in, uh, in uh, various organizations and various periods of time, there, is, there are just so many causes. Water is a problem, you've got uh, mental health is a problem, child welfare is a problem, education is a problem, everything requires uh, application of mind and resources. So that we need not worry about uh, you know, where we begin, we can begin somewhere and we should not complain about why something is not receiving attention. Uh, everything is receiving attention but the, the, the size of the problem is so much bigger than the supply of solutions. We will have a long way to go. Oh, I have a simple question. Keep doing mindless donations uh, and just putting lots and lots of money into Archaka's play, uh, play when he shows uh, uh, Arati and all that. Then uh, is it necessary that uh, is it any kind of donation or uh, how, how we should take it? You know, I think uh, faith is is another business. <coughs> it's a faith as a business between you and the God. You God. Uh, it's not between two uh, human beings, but it's between you and the God. Uh, and therefore, uh, you know what you what you therefore offer 